All right, in this module, we're gonna look at the iron carbon system and particularly the, the phase diagram for that. All right, so before we start, um, I just wanted to kind of mention that the reason, we're, uh, we, the reason we look at this is because this system, this iron carbon system uh, is important for steels, which are very common structural elements, uh, as well as cast irons, which uh, play a pretty important role uh, in metals as well. So this is the iron, iron carbon, uh, iron, iron carbide phase diagram. And the reason I mention iron, iron carbide instead of iron carbon is if you look at it, you'll notice that we go from 0% carbon, which is pure iron, uh, but we only go to 6.7 weight percent carbon. And that's because that composition, as you see here in red, is the composition of Fe3C, which is known as cementite, which is an iron carbide because it's uh, a compound of iron and carbon. So we only look at that portion uh, because uh, that's basically the kind of the only in, in important part for steels and cast irons. So rarely do we look above 6.7 weight percent carbon. And so it, just to kind of clarify that, that is the iron cementite phase diagram because again, we're cutting it off here. So there's two important points uh, in this phase diagram, and we've actually already talked about these types of reactions. And let's go with the first one first, and that's A. So A is over here at 4.3 weight percent carbon. Um, and at point A, if uh, you remember from our reactions, the various reactions we've talked about, this is liquid above, and then two solids, even though one is goes by a Greek letter, and one is um, a, a carbide, it doesn't matter. There are two phases, two solid phases. And so this is a eutectic reaction. So this is the eutectic reaction in the steel or iron carbon uh, system. And it's again, liquid goes to gamma plus Fe3C. So that's one important reaction. Uh, this is actually a really high amount of carbon, uh, and so this is more important in cast irons and really doesn't come into play when we talk about steel systems. The second reaction is at B, which is right here, uh, and this is, if we kind of do the same um, progression, if we look at what's above it, we see that we have gamma, which they're calling austenite here, and then below it, in this phase region, you see alpha plus Fe3C. So this is much like the eutectic, but we have a solid phase above. And so that's the eutectoid, if you remember from our various reactions that we can have. And so this is a very important reaction that occurs um, for the steel system. Uh, and you can see it's at point. 7, 6 weight percent, so a relatively small amount of carbon, uh, but it's, uh, that's a significant amount uh, in the steel system. And so uh, that tends to be the most important reaction in the steel system. And so again, the, the kind of microstructure here is solid. And then when we go below that to the alpha plus Fe3C, um, much like the eutectic microstructures that we saw, eutectoid microstructures have a similar appearance. And those phases, alpha, we call ferrite. So ferrite is the low temperature form of iron. Um, and you see here that it's a very small wedge of this kind of bluish color. Um, that means that there's not much solubility of carbon in the ferrite or alpha form of iron. Um, whereas if we increase the temperature, the next phase of steel or iron is austenite or gamma. Uh, and that you can see from this very large area has a large solubility of carbon up to around four, uh, 2%, two weight percent um, at the higher temperature. So we have two phases here. And so when we decrease the temperature from austenite through the eutectoid, we get alpha, but then we precipitate this Fe3C, which is known as cementite. Uh, and this is a harder um, ceramic-like uh, structure. Uh, and so that mixture is a strong uh, material, even though the ferrite is, is soft. So this is basically like 
the lamellar structure that we saw with the eutectic, uh, but the starting phase is a solid instead of a liquid up here. So that's the, the main difference to consider. And so this is an actual image of this eutectoid mixture of alpha ferrite and Fe3C or cementite. And uh, because it has this very um, pronounced um, appearance, the lamellar uh, layered structure, just like eutectic, um, we call this perlite. So this mixture of the two is called perlite in the steel system. So you might hear the term perlite or perlitic steel that refers to the presence of perlite, which is in itself a mixture of alpha and Fe3C. All right, so let's take a look at perlite a little bit and compare it to eutectic because it's, again, very similar in how it forms. And it forms this structure because of the diffusion limits of this material. So once we uh, start to form, um, or once we go below that temperature, there's going to be a driving force for the formation of alpha and uh, cementite at the same time. And so it's gonna be from austenite. And so we have the growth of this and it grows in these planes like we see here, these small layers, because um, ferrite has a very low solubility of carbon. So the carbon basically out in front of the ferrite has to diffuse to the Fe3C, which is very carbon rich. And then the iron uh, out front of the cementite has to diffuse the opposite way. And so those distances need to be as small as possible if these are gonna grow simultaneously. And that's why we get this structure, this perlite structure, just like the eutectic that, that was formed. So even though it's uh, forming from a solid, the growth mechanism is really the same. And it's because of these uh, diffusion distances uh, that we have to account for. So this is basically the most favorable way to have both of those phases grow at the same time so that we can have the redistribution of carbon out in front of the austenite or gamma phase. So that layered structure shortens those diffusion distances for carbon and allows for this to occur and the, uh, allows for the growth of perlite.